One of the first things they teach you in the fire academy is the importance of knowing your equipment. But here's a question for you. Fire departments wear a lot of hats. We're fire, we're rescue, we're EMS, we're hazmat, we're dive rescue. We do a whole bunch of things. Is it reasonable, especially for smaller and volunteer departments, to expect all firemen to be proficient at all jobs and all equipment? This video is sponsored by Columbia Southern University. Columbia Southern University is an all online university based in Orange Beach, Alabama. And the best part about them is that they are all online, which means that you get to take classes at your convenience according to your schedule, from the comfort of your own home, your bed, your couch, your office, or wherever it's convenient for you. Now, most of you watching this channel are gonna be interested in public safety, things like fire science, EMS administration, and things related to that. But they also offer a variety of other programs, business, cybersecurity, information technology, and more. Now, whether you're looking to get started or finished, your associates, your bachelors, your masters, or maybe even a doctorate program, they are the place for you. I'll leave the link below. Visit columbiasouthern.edu slash FFN to find out more. So this video comes to us from Ewing, New Jersey, and actually one of you guys sent this to me to take a look at, and I appreciate you sending it in because after I watched it, there was quite a bit to learn from this. And at the time of this fire, the station that responded was primarily run by volunteers. And after this, a few years later, they were eventually replaced with 13 career firefighters. Now, if we look at this particular fire, it looks like your basic residential house. And when they arrive on scene, they do a good job pulling a line, getting water on the fire quickly. Looks like they have a backup line pulled to the front door already. So they're doing a pretty good job. But you saw they started getting a lot of water out of it. And then all of a sudden the hose died out. Now, what you might not have noticed is that the first truck that showed up was a ladder truck. And if you're new to the fire service or unfamiliar with the differences between the trucks, ladder trucks generally don't carry that much water. Usually, depending on the truck, it carries anywhere from two to 300 gallons on board. And anything more than that, you're gonna need to secure an outside water source. Why did that hose die out? Could have been a bunch of reasons. Could have been user error, could have been the pump malfunction, could have been that they just ran out of water. Who knows? But right now they're in a tough situation because it looks like they're out of water and they haven't even begun to do their interior attack yet.
All right, so you saw there, the chief sent the engine to the end of the street, presumably to secure a water supply and bring water back to that ladder truck. There's multiple ways to do it. Was this the right move? Yeah, probably. I wasn't there, but what he also could have done, and this is just something to think about, is just stop that engine, pull new lines off of that engine because there's probably a 500 to 750 gallon tank on there and then take the supply line and hook the hydrant from there and then just run your operation off of the engine. Again, I wasn't there. There's multiple ways to do things, good, bad, right, wrong. It's very easy to sit back and say what somebody else should have done, but that's just another option you can consider. So you just heard that lady say, can you guys do something? That, by the way, is the homeowner. And to her credit, she's being relatively calm considering she's watching her house burn down. So eventually they secure a water supply and begin getting water on the fire. Now, what are some key takeaways from this? Well, first is the importance of knowing your equipment, which goes back to the question I asked at the beginning of this video. For smaller and especially volunteer departments, is it reasonable to expect them to know how to use every piece of equipment? In those articles I linked below, one of them mentions the fact that the particular pump operator at that day wasn't that familiar with that truck, but volunteers face a difficult problem. You never know who's gonna show up on a fire. You're not getting paid to do this, at least not very much. In fact, I think I read in one of the articles that at the time, they incentivized volunteer departments with $5 to show up to a fire. 
that's not very much money. It's difficult to get training in, it's difficult to become proficient in everything, and it's even more difficult to stay proficient at everything over time. The next takeaway is the importance of a good pump operator. I know people like to give a hard time to pump operators as being lazy and all you do is drive, but that is one of, if not the most important job on the fire ground. And the importance of knowing your equipment and how to make sure you're able to get water to your firefighters inside and keep them constantly supplied is more difficult than you would think. And then the final takeaway is the importance of getting water on the fire quickly. That seems so obvious and so basic, but I think these guys did a good job. They pulled those lines, they began getting water on the outside and were getting ready to do their interior tack when the pump malfunctioned or whatever happened. And unfortunately they had to wait until they got another water supply. And if you want to see another video illustrating the importance of getting water on the fire quickly, you should check out this one right here.